Hey, I'm Governor John Carney, and we're here this morning for our fiscal year 2023 budget presentation. We do this every year. Normally, it's a, a press conference in person. Today, we're coming to you live streaming uh, for purposes of being safe from COVID-19. Just at the top, I'd like to thank everybody for really leaning into mitigation efforts over the last several weeks. We're seeing positive developments, particularly at our hospitals. The hospital numbers are, are down and, and headed in the right direction, as are uh, the number of positive cases and the percent positive on the testing. So thank you for your vigilance there. Thank you for putting your masks back on indoors. It really makes a difference and helps us with, with frankly, our budget uh, by strengthening our economy, enabling businesses to get back uh, to full speed, workers to go back to work in person, and you'll see the effects of that. We'll talk a little bit about that in each of the slides this morning. We will have a slide uh, presentation. I'm joined by the Secretary of Finance, Rick Geisenberger. I appreciate uh, the work of him and his team in uh, developing our revenue estimates through the Delaware Economic and Financial Advisory Committee. They just do tremendous work. Rick will comment on tax policy and the state of our economy and some of the risks that are involved. Us, Ron Cade is our, our director of the Office of Management and Budget, thanks to his team and all the budget folks in, in, and cabinet secretaries in each of the agencies. So Ron's going to really elaborate uh, on some of the detail behind the presentation. I'm going to hit some of the highlights here at the beginning and, and as we move through. Uh, we also welcome Cheryl today, who's our sign language expert for the deaf and hard of hearing. Thank you, Cheryl, for being with us as well. Uh, you'll see today, uh, you'll hear from us some of the things that I've talked about over the last four years in terms of being disciplined and responsible in our budgeting and looking to the future to make sure that increases that we're including in the, this budget or the prior year budgets are sustainable in the long term. We get our revenue estimates uh, from the Delaware Economic and Financial Advisory Commission and, and build our budget based on that. Uh, the discipline is really imposed by uh, an executive order that I signed uh, early on in the administration and uh, we've modified since, which really puts uh, additional discipline into the budgeting process and ties our operating budget uh, spending increase to a target, a benchmark, we refer to it, uh, that is established by, by DFAC. And so that's what uh, guides us, it enables us to, to ride through the revenue ups and downs, and we'll show a slide uh, that uh, demonstrates that. It has enabled us to get through the downturn in revenues that we experienced as a result of the shutdowns of COVID-19, businesses not being oper operational. We lost a, a lot of revenue, as did many states. We were able to get through that without tax increases on the other end, service cuts or, or cuts in employees. And we're really positioned well now with uh, strong reserves and uh, the ability to, to do some improvements, particularly focused on our state employees and workers as we compete with the private sector for new employees to fill vacancies that we have. That is the biggest challenge that I hear from business owners across our state. We are experiencing it in state government as well. Uh, it's create it and our target uh, to, to meet the obligations under the, the $15 uh, minimum wage. And so we have a, a strong uh, pay policy that's part of this budget. Uh, that provides additional uh, increases for those at the lower end of the pay scale, but increases uh, for, for all state employees all the way through and setting aside resources for our collective bargaining units and those contracts, as well as for our teachers and educators with the steps that they have built in their, into their pay plan. So this is going to be a continued focus of ours over the next couple of years to uh, improve our ability as a state government to be able to provide the services that are so necessary, particularly those that uh, we've learned over the last two years are so critically important to keep our, our community safe, to keep all of you safe during the situation in the pandemic. One of the other really important things going on is the, 
the federal resources that we've received, and we'll, we'll highlight those in a minute. They've enabled us to respond to COVID-19, to support businesses, to make available a testing, vaccinations, protection of, of workers and families across our state with special focus on making sure more vulnerable populations were able to support our hospitals and frontline healthcare workers, as well as uh, long-term care facilities and the vulnerable uh, Delawareans that uh, live in those facilities. We also uh, we sh also should give a nod to our Delaware Army and Air National Guard. We'll be able with the federal funds to build a new readiness center here out at the airport, which is obviously important uh, for responding to future emergencies. Thanks go out to uh, to the Army and, and Air National Guard for everything they've been doing. Also a special thanks and recognition to Senator Carper, Senator Coons, Congresswoman Blunt Rochester, Rochester, and of course, our President, President Biden, with the approval of the federal funding, both the CARES Act funding that enabled us to respond to COVID, the ARPA funding, which is enabling us to invest in facilities, uh, challenges brought on by COVID, and then the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which is a historic opportunity to meet uh, transportation needs, large pro infrastructure projects across our state, including such things as broadband installation in, in the middle part of our state uh, county in Sussex County. All those federal funds will enable us to really accelerate uh, uh, the, uh, our uh, economic growth, job creation as we move out of uh, the pandemic situation and Obviously, we'll we'll see. We're already seeing that, and enable us to make investments in important uh, state facilities like the home for the chronically ill uh, there in uh, in Smyrna. So let's go to the slide presentation. The first slide, of course, we've received historic federal assistance and resources to fight COVID and to respond to it and strengthen our economy. It really comes in in three uh, large bucket: the, the CARES Act funding, which was uh, just short of a uh, uh, of $100 million, uh, I'm sorry, a billion dollars. There's the CARES Act, all that the money for COVID relief and response, uh, our Economic Security Act supporting workers and businesses. The American Rescue Plan Act, again, was our resources coming to states uh, and local governments to help uh, accelerate and strengthen the economy out of COVID and then the bipartisan infrastructure law that we talked about. So let's look at the big buckets in each of these uh, areas. First, in the CARES Act funding, uh, we have uh, uh, just over 200 million that went into replenish the unemployment trust fund and 200 million that was relief for small businesses. So both of those buckets really went to strengthen uh, small business, to support small businesses because without replenishing the unemployment trust fund. Those funds would have to re, re, be replaced with a tax on small business at a time when they can least afford it. I talk, as I talk to business owners across our state, particularly those in the, those industries and, and sectors hardest hit, uh, these resources, these federal resources, enabled them to stay in business and that's critically important. About 200 million of the uh, CARES Act funding went to our testing contact tracing and COVID response uh, through public health. And then another 140 million went to childcare assistance to keep our childcare facilities open and running uh, during the, uh, the shutdowns that were necessary to respond to COVID-19. The American Rescue Plan Act, better known as ARPA, here are the big buckets. Again, 355 million for statewide technology and capital upgrades. I mentioned the home for the chronically ill, HVAC uh, improvements in our correctional facilities and uh, state buildings, uh, uh, an opportunity to build uh, a, new, uh, a new lab for both our natural resources folks and for public health, lots of important technology projects that enable us to respond and provide better services to the public. $135 million into housing development and emergency housing, really critical for a very vulnerable populations uh, on the margin there. And then I mentioned, uh, as, uh, as was the case with the CARES Act, 121 million 
to support uh, our hospitals and healthcare facilities. Another 112 million for uh, community uh, recovery fund, uh, capital projects for community service organizations. We're still take, we have a whole list of, of applications for that and decisions being made on how to, to allocate those resources. Each of these buckets, the, there are uh, tight criteria from the federal legislation that direct the kind of uh, allocation that we can make here with uh, also we've, we've announced uh, 41 million for the University of Delaware, 33 million for each Delaware Tech and Delaware State University, again, facilities uh, that are necessary for responses to COVID uh, uh, pandemic outbreaks. And then another $100 million for COVID response and 50 million for workforce development. The bipartisan infrastructure law, uh, which obviously passed in a bipartisan uh, measure is federal relief and federal funding for transportation infrastructure and other infrastructure really to be spent out over the next five years. So a little bit different than the CARES Act, which was spent pretty quickly, as well as ARPA funding, which has uh, a two or three year limitation on allocation and, and uh, the use of those funds. So here are the big buckets, uh, 1.2 billion in federal highway money, again, over the five year uh, capital improvement program, a really a historic opportunity to make improvements and address clean water challenges up and down our state with $355 million for water and wastewater projects. Again, many of these, if not most of these projects are in the lower part of our state and uh, longstanding uh, problems with water, clean water down in Sussex and Kent County. $225 million for bridge replacements and repairs, again, statewide, and a real opportunity to address uh, to address public transit Im improvements and the electrification uh, of our transportation network uh, with recharging stations, 220 million there for public transit. And then I mentioned uh, broad brand infrastructure, particularly for uh, Western Kent County and Sussex County. So moving on to our budget, uh, we made it through the worst of the pandemic because well, we were responsible with our budget smoothing, targeting our operating budgets to a benchmark established by DFAC uh, based on increases in, in median household income, population growth, those kinds of, of factors. And so we've been able to avoid tax increases and service cuts over the last couple of years. We'll talk about that on the next slide. You can see uh, what the challenges that we face, those, uh, the gold line is the percentage increase in revenues in a given year, and you can see the signif a significant uh, reduction in the growth of our res revenues in F FY20 and 21 as a result of the pandemic, and then the dramatic increase uh, in FY22. So our, benchmark, our spending benchmark enables us to str uh, strike a course in between the ups and downs in our, in our revenue picture and has enabled us to maintain a sustainable budget and to uh, to sustain the improvements in education, in higher education, in uh, preschool education, in all the other services that the state provides. So here's what it looks like in the big picture. We've got uh, the big uh, blue in those pie charts is our operating budgets for FY 2022 and FY 2023, just short of $5 billion for FY 20. 23, the budget we're presenting today with significant reserves and one time, which is in the green uh, pie, a uh, piece of the pie, and then savings, additional savings in the Budget Stabilization Act. Again, uh, part of uh, the executive order that put in place budget smoothing. So we do have some tax policy, which Rick is, uh, Secretary Geisenberger is gonna talk about that are included in our budget to, to address legislation that's currently before the General Assembly. Secretary Geisenberger. So the governor's, uh, good morning, everyone. The governor's financial plan does include support for uh, four pieces of legislation that are working their way through the General Assembly. Uh, this first one that you see is uh, would exempt unemployment insurance that was benefits that were received in 2000. 21 from taxation. Uh, and if you go down to the employer section, you'll see that this also 
uh, prevents uh, unemployment insurance tax increases on employers that may have, uh, particularly those that were impacted by COVID that would have seen uh, significant increases in their rates uh, due to higher experience factors with unemployment. The deposits that we made in the unemployment insurance trust fund make that possible. It will also save new employers because we, we've been had such high unemployment rates in 2020 and 2021 from paying higher premiums. That bill, uh, and we thank the General Assembly, is uh, House Bill 285. It's already passed the House in January and the Senate's going to consider that bill this afternoon. So we thank the members of the General Assembly for moving so quickly to get that enacted. The other three bills, the first one would double the volunteer firefighter tax credit from 500 to, uh, to $1,000. The next bill would help us try to attract uh, uh, military, military retirees. A lot of times they retire in their 30s and 40s and 50s with you know, tremendous skills that they've learned in the military and we'd like them to stay in Delaware uh, and uh, create jobs, uh, seek employment here in Delaware. And so this would increase the amount of their pension that would be uh, exempt from taxation. And then the final bill uh, is a bill that promotes uh, making in, uh, uh, investments in the Delaware College Savings Plan and the Delaware ABLE Plan, which uh, are savings that you set aside for uh, your child's future college education or for a disabled child uh, to care for that child uh, later in life. So this would provide uh, a tax deduction uh, for those types of contributions to the Delaware plan. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Rick, for going through uh, the tax cuts, tax policy that's included in this budget. Again, responsive to uh, legislation that's just that's already before uh, the General Assembly. Uh, next slide uh, shows the top line budget numbers. Uh, again, an operating budget that's 4.6% uh, operating budget growth, a little bit higher than the benchmark, uh, really to meet uh, the challenges that we're facing with higher uh, pay increases for state employees, uh, with the competition that, that we have with the private sector. And really, I guess every employer in our state uh, 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 driving up uh, wages to meet uh, the limited supply of workers and, and the importance of services that we provide. Grant and aid there at 57 million, our bond and capital improvements plan, I think the second largest uh, capital program in the state history, just second only to last year with uh, almost $600 million of cash to the bond bill. Again, consistent with our budget smoothing uh, executive order and then putting additional money into the, uh, the budget stabilization reserve uh, in addition to the rainy day fund uh, to, to uh, have uh, an additional uh, cushion there uh, given the uncertainty as we move forward. So our budget highlights and priorities continue to be the same, really strengthen, trying to strengthen the economy and invest in those things that, that enable us to be, as a state, more competitive, to bring jobs into our state, to enable businesses to, to hire again as we, uh, as we rebound uh, from COVID-19 shutdowns, expanding opportunities for more uh, people in our state, both with, with higher wages and with uh, opportunities to get uh, training and, and education necessary to be successful, and then supporting our families and workforce, particularly vulnerable families and, and uh, workers that do critical uh, service, provide critical service for, uh, for the state of Delaware. So Uh, anticipated revenues. Obviously, this budget uh, appropriates much less than that, targeted towards the DFAC ben benchmark. We fully fund the B Budget Stabilization Act, and we allocate uh, one-time money to one-time capital projects, almost $600 million in cash to the bond bill. So, uh, Director Cade's going to go over uh, the highlights for the budget, uh, and then I'll come back and talk a little bit about some of the priorities, the big spending priorities that address you know, critical needs across our state. Uh, Director Kate. Thank you, Governor. Um, this budget, as the governor mentioned previously, 
focuses very heavily on compensation and pay policy and pay equity for state employees. Also includes uh, significant uh, pay increases for child care workers and folks who are kind of on the front lines uh, providing services throughout uh, our state. Uh, this budget you'll see will increase opportunity funding investments for low income and English language learners consistent with uh, the governor's objective throughout the past five years. Um, continues investments in clean water, economic development, and fulfills our commitment to new school construction in all three counties. Uh, completes funding to support secure and modern spaces for, court, uh, for our Kent and Sussex County courthouses uh, as we move toward fully funding those two projects. So we know that uh, good jobs uh, solve a lot of problems and that's why a major focus of, of mine as governor has been on working with the private sector, working with our General Assembly to create an environment where businesses can be successful. It's been particularly challenging over the last uh, two years as we try to keep employees, workers, uh, and the public uh, safe and with having uh, various shutdowns. And so we continue to invest and provide tools for our Delaware Prosperity Partnership and the Division of Small Business in the Department of State, uh, whose responsibility it is to create that environment where businesses can expand, hire Delawareans, and help Delawareans support their families. Here are the big buckets, $60 million overall for economic development, the strategic fund, $30 million. We have two funds that the legislature helped us create, the Site Readiness Fund and the Transportation Infrastructure Fund, which enable us to respond to uh, proposals that businesses have either to expand here an existing business, and we've had some real successes like, uh, like Insight and, and Prelude Therapeutics, uh, enabling them to grow here in Delaware and create jobs and add employment uh, to their businesses and, and facilities here in our state, uh, as well as bringing new uh, employers to our state like uh, Wuxi SD Pharmaceuticals and their big pharmaceutical manufacturing facility plan uh, for the Middletown area. Graduation lab space, we're trying to uh, incentivize the development of science and technology companies uh, at the Delaware Experimental Station, uh, uh, the former DuPont Experimental Station, multi-tenant experimental station now, including our partnership uh, with University of Delaware and DuPont, the Star Campus and, and other uh, co-working and incubating spaces. This graduation lab space enables us to help companies stay in Delaware as they grow. Significant investments in our environment and farmland and open space preservation, uh, $30 million there, really important work. Uh, one of the best uh, farmland preservation programs in the country and significant uh, preservation of open space as well. Uh, thanks to the, the, the uh, folks that do that job. Uh, shoreline and waterway resiliency, you know, we've got significant challenges as a low lying state to meet the uh, sea rise, climate change, and this, uh, this, uh, this, these resources will enable us to do that. And then really the big uh, game changer with $355 million of federal funding and then, then additional state funding for the Clean Water Trust Fund, which will enable us to address really longstanding uh, challenges, uh, particularly in the lower part of our state uh, with uh, clean water problems. Uh, Secretary Cade mentioned uh, school construction across our state in each of the counties, uh, $339 million. We've been able uh, to pre-fund some of those obligations, wh which will help us in the out years. But you can see the numbers there, 82 million in Newcastle County, uh, 90 million in Kent County, and over 100 million in Sussex County with additional resources set aside for bids that are coming in higher than expected and additional resources for the Wilmington Learning Collaborative. We're really excited about the prospect there, working with Christina School District, Red Clay and Brandywine School Districts with additional a focus on uh, educating children in the city of Wilmington and working together to do that with additional resources there. I've been spending a lot of my time knocking doors in neighborhoods across uh, the city, talking to parents, talking to teachers, I was visiting uh, yesterday Pulaski uh, Elementary and, and the middle school on the west side, uh, preparing for the new 
uh, or for the uh, rehabilitation of, of Byard on the west side. We're building, building a new elementary school on the east side and working with the community on that. That's uh, really a highlight in the mayor's proposal to, to improve housing uh, and make improvement, community development improvements on the east side as well. And so we're really excited about that opportunity. There is uh, school construction happening across our state uh, and Director Cade is gonna uh, highlight some of those projects in each of our three counties. Thank you, Governor. Um, so looking at the slide, um, the there's a, a, a large number of school construction projects that are underway as well as in uh, concept up and down the state in this budget. Uh, take some very large steps to completing those projects. Uh, as you can see in Newcastle County, a large ticket item, there's a new Hodgson Votech uh, and Appaquinamick. Uh, that, that $23 million includes the new Reading School as well as the new elementary school, begins us on the track of getting a new elementary school for 800 plus students. Um, also the Capital School District and um, uh, Smyrna School District, seeing a new middle school as well as a new elementary school uh, in the pipeline. Cesar Rodney with St. Thomas More, uh, as well as the Milford Middle School uh, coming in at large thir $37 million. Again, this doesn't fully fund these projects, but it gets us on a path uh, to complete uh, funding of them far ahead of schedule. Um, we also see in Sussex County two new high schools, um, the new Sussex Tech, as well as the new Sussex Central and Indian River. So very large investments in school construction uh, up and down our state. Next slide. As the governor mentioned, this budget continues uh, the focus on low income and English language learners uh, as we continue to fund the opportunity, uh, opportunity funding um, and set ourselves toward a goal of doubling that funding by 2025. Uh, budget also sets aside $20.6 million toward mental health services for elementary school students uh, as a result of uh, the General Assembly passing HB 100 last year. Next slide. When dealing with our higher eds, we again have taken an opportunity to focus on addressing deferred maintenance at our three uh, big college and university campuses, University of Delaware and Delaware State University and uh, Dell Tech. Uh, we also set aside $15 million for the Higher Education Economic Development Fund. Um, this budget also includes uh, increase and expansion of scholarships for CE, Inspire, as well as University of Delaware's First State Promise Scholarship for students of high needs. Uh, as you'll see as a consistent theme throughout this budget, we uh, try to focus on compensation. Uh, Delaware Tech uh, has established a compensation stabilization program over the last few years. Uh, and this is the second installment to assist them in competing for talent up and down our state. Uh, all, this budget also includes a bachelor's of education program and supporting it with $100,000 for Delaware Tech as well. This, and uh, it's important to note the $107 million that the governor mentioned earlier uh, in ARPA funding uh, for our higher education uh, and, uh, high colleges and universities. Next slide. So again, uh, there's been a large focus in the administration on transparency and policing and justice. This, bu this budget continues that focus by adding another $4 million toward the deployment of body-worn cameras and almost $400,000 to support our in-car camera uh, program for law enforcement officers. This budget also includes $11.6 million to address safety and infrastructure needs at our correctional facilities uh, in all three counties. Next slide. Uh, again, when we talk about strengthening our communities, we can't do that without supporting our families. Uh, this budget includes $1.4 million to support extended postpartum Medicaid coverage. Um, also, uh, this budget expands the development of therapeutic foster care programs um, up and down our state to address juveniles with uh, increased need. This budget also includes the expansion uh, of the CHIP program for just under a million dollars, as well as $3.7 million to increase the support of expungement programs as a result of legislation that's passed over the last few years. We also see again, uh, standing uh, in alignment with uh, our focus on therapeutic foster care, the expansions of our crisis bed uh, uh, units in Kent and Sussex County. Next slide. 
Uh, we again focus on our healthcare workers, um, you know, constantly in competition throughout our region uh, for high quality healthcare workers and supporting our healthcare provider state loan program uh, puts us in a closer, uh, in a better space and being able to compete. Uh, also, um, this, this budget makes permanent the mental health services loan forgiveness program for Delaware State University, as well as University of Delaware for individuals who are graduating with degrees uh, in mental health and psychology and other uh, mental health services. This budget also, uh, again, staying in a consistent theme of focusing on supporting workers and trying to increase uh, wages. This budget focuses $11.5 million to increase the support uh, for child care providers, as well as workers who have been on the front lines of this pandemic uh, supporting our children. Yeah, so one of the biggest priorities uh, of the budget this year is uh, worker compensation and uh, improving our ability to attract uh, workers to our state. We have a lot of vacancies in each agency. Each one of the cabinet secretaries I talked to, I know uh, the schools struggle to hire teachers. I was in a school uh, just yesterday where they had significant uh, vacancies. This is going to be a focus of ours, not just in this budget, but I'm sure in, in the next uh, couple of years as well, as we try to move uh, folks to, to in, in, increase and improve the pay scale uh, for state workers, address uh, educational uh, pay as well. Uh, we have the focus the last couple of years has been on uh, focusing on those in, in, in pay grade one, those uh, at the lowest end of the pay scale and, and actually having pay policy that is more uh, a lump sum, say $1,000 uh, for, uh, for each employee as opposed to a percentage increase. This year, we take a little bit different approach in, in raising and improving the pay scale itself. And so you have large increases uh, at the bottom of the pay scale, uh, you know, larger increases than we've been able to do at the middle of, of the pay scale and, and all the way through to the top, trying to to uh, provide additional resources to compete uh, with the private sector. This is this is going to be a focus of ours. You know, we've got uh, a pay increases that that range uh, from uh, you know a high at the very bottom at, of nine percent to two percent at the top, and uh, with an average there more than we've been able to do the last couple of years. We are still continue, continuing on the pace uh, to meet, hit the fifteen dollar minimum wage uh, that was established by uh, the legislature uh, for the private sector here in our state. And we're making steady progress uh, there. Not quite there yet, but getting there. And we have a one-time bonus for state retirees, uh, obviously funding uh, negotiated contracts with those that we uh, bargain with collectively and uh, fully fund uh, the pay scales and Provide two percent for uh, for our educators. Uh, Saran, you want to talk more about that, or move on to uh, the other capital uh, slides? There, uh, we'll move on to the capital slides. So, just in summation, we'll go over some top line numbers. Um, Three hundred and five million, as we mentioned, for school construction, as we improve schools for Delaware students and keep up with population growth. Uh, Governor mentioned before, uh, continued focus on small business. Uh, and infrastructure and economic development and providing opportunity. Uh, the strategic fund helps us in doing that. So we recommend another $30 million uh, for that. Next slide. Obviously high ticket uh, items that you see here is an uh, increased focus on um, our libraries, uh, obviously anchors and our communities. Uh, this, this will be companion, companion funding that will be coming from uh, ARP as well. So this uh, state dollars will uh, go to uh, leverage some other ARP funds to allow us really to invest in these anchors throughout uh, up and down our state. Uh, also, you see uh, 21 million for preserving our historical and recreational sites. So our Brandywine Zoo, John Dickinson Plantation, Cooch's Bridge and other tourist destinations and, and locations that Delawareans uh, travel to uh, for education and uh, relaxation. Also, um, 
looking at protecting our natural resources for future generations. The governor mentioned major investments in clean uh, water and drinking water programs over $355 million in federal funding and also other state funds as well. Uh, and uh, $30 million in ag land preservation and open space. Next slide. Uh, we mentioned before, uh, continue to focus on uh, funding our Kent and Sussex County courthouse projects. Uh, we're looking at the start of the Sussex County courthouse uh, construction being the middle of this year, sometime in the spring, and Kent County being at the end of the year. This budget also includes new uh, Delaware State Police Troops 4 and 6, uh, as well as a continued investment in the Customs House in Newcastle County and City of Wilmington. Um, also looking at building a strong foundation for our state, um, investing in our state facilities uh, that the public vi visits uh, daily for services um, is a, been a major focus of the administration as well. Next slide, Governor. Um, so again, hitting on these top line numbers, um, $4.9 billion but operating budget, uh, just about 4.6. Uh, percent growth, uh, $56.9 million in grant and aid, nearly a $1.2 billion uh, capital improvements bond bill, uh, which includes $591 million in cash to the bond bill, or, uh, uh, as well as $215 million in uh, one times for technology upgrades and, uh, and health care uh, for state workers. Uh, this budget also sets aside $15 million to continue the effort of fully funding uh, the budget stabilization fund uh, for cash savings uh, and the continued responsible outlook on future financial planning. Next slide. So this, uh, thank you, Secretary Cade. Uh, this slide lays out uh, the schedule for our budget process. Uh, obviously, we're here in January where each year uh, the governor uh, submits a, it's his recommended budget to the General Assembly. This is my rec recommended budget for FY 2023. Uh, prior to today, our cabinet secretaries have been working with their, their agency leaders in developing the budget uh, through the summer and, and the fall. Uh, our budget office has had uh, hearings with each of those agencies. We've worked with uh, uh, federal agencies in, in understanding uh, the significant resources provided. Uh, by the federal government. Again, uh, thanks go out to Senator Carper, Senator Coons, Congresswoman Blunt Rochester, and President Biden for those resources, which will really help us both in this budget and in strengthening our economy and supporting families and workers as we, uh, as we work our way out of COVID-19. Joint Finance Committee will have hearings now and the Bond Bill Committee uh, through the, the rest of the winter and spring leading up to a markup of the budget with changes that the General Assembly will include in, in April and May and a final approval expected uh, by June 30th. And so I wanna thank again, all the those who are, uh, had, were instrumental in putting this together, getting us to this place. Uh, and I would ask uh, Rick to, I know we have a couple of DFAC meetings coming up, uh, Delaware Economic and Financial Advisory Committee, which will fine tune the re revenue estimate on which uh, the final budget uh, needs to be based uh, and approved by the General Assembly. If you could give us a little uh, summary of uh, the thinking of the, of the DFAC and where we are, you've got a couple of meetings left, I know. If you could just comment on those, uh, sure, well, on the thinking of the committee. Sure, you know, as DFAC meets over the next uh, five months or so, you know, the things that are top of mind on the expense side, expenditure side, is inflation. Uh, last year, inflation uh, was at its highest level since 1990. If you look at the last couple of months, inflation's been at the highest level since, 19, since, uh, since 1980. It was 1990 last year. Uh, wage pressures, uh, the governor mentioned wage pressure in the private sector, public sector too. Wage growth has been the highest level since 1949. Uh, I don't think any of the three of us remember 1949. We're around 1949. Uh, but uh, uh, so there's concern about that. Uh, and the reason we have this big spike in revenue is frankly due to three sources. Uh, 
they happen to be our three most volatile revenue sources, the corporate income tax, the realty transfer tax, which is driven by real estate and home sales and interest rates, and then estimated personal income tax payments, which are largely driven by uh, uh, capital gains and stock market. Um, all three of those revenue sources have been growing over the last two years at four times the rate, four times the rate of what they had been growing in the 10 years prior. So what we've seen historically and what we'll be keeping a close eye on is that when, you, when that happens, we tend to see a drop off. Sometimes that drop off in those revenue categories is as much as 30 to 45%, which you know, inserts anywhere from 500 to $600 million of downside risk. So all of those things, inflation, wages, the volatility of our revenues, are why this budget's been constructed to try to be cautious in terms of how much operating budget growth we build, uh, also cautious around what we do in terms of long-term tax policy. So thank you very much, uh, Secretary Geisenberger. Um, so we have followed uh, kind of the budget smoothing principles, uh, trying to uh, chart a course in between the highs and lows of uh, the revenue that we that we receive uh, from taxpayers over the last several years that has, has served us well uh, and successfully during the downturn as a result of, of COVID-19. And in order to, to maintain uh, these improvements, uh, both for in terms of worker salaries, in terms of investments in education, uh, support for, for families or early childcare, we need to, to continue to chart that, uh, that cautious course going forward. There is significant downside uh, risk, as Rick mentioned, uh, on the order of, you know, a quarter to half a billion dollars, and so we're going to continue to be responsible uh, with this proposal, working with the General Assembly. We appreciate uh, their cooperation over the last couple of years in adopting these principles, which will serve Delaware taxpayers well, uh, both today and in the future, and enable us to make the kinds of investments necessary so our Children can be successful in school, uh, grow up to be successful in life, so we can have a strong and growing economy that supports uh, all Delawareans and that we can uh, address the needs of vulnerable populations across our state. So just finally, uh, thanks once again to, to uh, Director Cade and his team at uh, OMB, Secretary Geisenberger, uh, and his team establishing the revenue estimates, everybody involved in the, pre uh, the preparation of this budget. And we look forward to working with you, the public, in, uh, in uh, responding to questions and concerns, as well as to the General Assembly, uh, who uh, make the final decisions on, uh, on the disposition of, of this budget. So thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to uh, the approval of the FY 2023 budget at the end of June.